advent of television, radio was the dominant form of entertainment in American households, and one of the most popular formats was radio theater. Shows like The Shadow, Lights Out, and Hall of Fantasy found their way to millions of listeners every week. The sway these shows had over the public's imagination was best demonstrated when a panic ensued after performance of The War of the Worlds by Orson Welles over fear of an actual attack from Mars. Flag of truth. If those creatures know what that means, what anything means. Wait a minute, something's happening. A shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against the mirror. What's that? Get yeah, the flame springs in the mirror and at least strike the advancing men. Just strike them head on. The logs are turning into flames. Ah! Oh, the whole field caught up by the woods of fire. The gas tank tanks of the automobiles spreading everywhere. Coming this way now. The spirit of this entertainment tradition is carried on today by Mr. Dan Bianchi, the founder of Radio Theater NYC. I recently had a chance to sit down with him to discuss his inspirations, his company, and the future of this unique art form. I grew up in uh, New York City, born and bred here, and um, um, that's a rarity these days, especially in the theater world, where so many people come from all over the world to work in New York City. But uh, yeah, I grew up here, um, didn't get into theater until, uh, well, in my early 20s, and um, worked in theater and film, and I'm also a visual artist, a painter, and so I've been working in the gallery world. Um, went out to Hollywood for a little bit um, and uh, worked as a screenwriter, a script doctor. Still, I wanted to get back into the live stage, but I didn't want to do plays and the usual stuff. I wanted to, you know, show something that most people um, ignore in the theater world, and that's the genres of horror science fiction, adventure, um, romance, mysteries, all of those things, um, but play them as straight as we could uh, without poking fun at an earlier time, uh, earlier people, and, and so forth. I didn't want to do that. So I said, well, why not make soundscapes, sound mm -hmm. dramas? Um, and <clears throat> I tried to take the best of uh, what I could from the presentation of uh, radio theater, that we know back in the old days using microphones, music, sound effects, um, but rather than trying to emulate an actual program from those years with the little uh, sound man, the live sound man on a, at a table making little sounds. I said, no, we're in the 20th, 21st century now um, to um, uh, let's bring in whatever technology we can find that isn't being used in the theater world. You know, as time went on, yes, we started radio theater, and that was five, six years ago now. What's going on today with the video games, and all the way with the movies, um, what has happened in, in the DVD market world uh, in recent past 10 years, 20 years even, um, probably started with Star Wars, was that when it would come out on DVD, they would also supply an extra DVD, two hours, two and a half hours, of how the movie was made from beginning to end, from the casting process all the way through to you know everything, sound, music, this, that, and so forth. And it's kind of like a whole generation grew up watching a great mag magician on stage uh, make the elephant disappear right before your eyes, and now I'm going to show you how I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's the man hiding behind the desk over here, and there's a trap door, and there's a mirror, and everything. So you have a whole generation going, oh, I get it, and the magic is gone. So that the next movie that comes out, you have kids this big sitting there going, you want to know how he did that? And that's so you know planted in their head, so that when a movie came out in 1933 uh, of King Kong, it left a mark not just on American society and culture, across the world. Um, why? Because you know that little puppet monster, <laughs> and the way it was made and the way it was done um, was real to people. When the big multi multi million dollar King Kong came out just a few years ago by Peter Jackson, 
it was it came and went and was gone in a year and who cares yeah um why because everyone knows that that blonde playing is really something you know we we saw all the interviews but da, 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 she's not really her and and we saw how the monster was met and, and on and on and on and so forth and again you're just left with like oh i get it rather than <gasps> and that sort of thing and that's in my own simplistic way of doing radio theater on a simple little black box theater and stage, I'm trying to recapture the magic that is lost. My impact that, uh, that I hope for here. The software, which I am pretty much using exclusively mm -hmm. um, to enable us to make the sound, uh, the music score, really. sound. Yes, there have been sound effects in theater before. Yes, there are sound designers. Yes, there are people who play music and so forth. Um, but I won awards against hundreds of groups um, in the best music categories. And all of those other people were making musicals. When I get up and accepted it, I said, I'm the only one here that doesn't make musicals. And I won the award because they're listening to original symphonic scores uh, in a house that they just can't deny and say, oh my God, what is that? And so it's a process now I'm developing as we make our shows and uh, I want to get it to the point where I say, look world, look what you could do with this. Mm -hmm. And before somebody else comes out and goes, look what we did. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're the second guy, it's like, okay. So that's what I'm hoping that radio theater. Yes, people have done certain plays before. We've done been doing Dracula and so forth. And, and yes, um, you know, sound effects have been done before and radio show things, but no one's ever done this music stuff we're doing. <laughs>